6th Avenue in Beatrice, Alabama. You can email us at freddychoward at gmail.com or howcgospel at yahoo.com. With that being said, we want to introduce you to those that have never heard it, and we want to present to you, to those who have never heard it, our weekly program that we're going to air on House of Ibrahim Gospel, Blog Talk Radio, called Gospel Music Today. Sit back and relax. It runs about 28 minutes. I've taken up a few minutes of that time, but that was for an introduction. For all of our friends throughout the South here in Beatrice, Tunnel Spring, Monroe, Mac William, um, Atmore, all my friends that I work with in the correctional business down at Homer Prison in Atmore. This is for you, for you to continue to listen to House of Gospel Blog Talk Radio. Coming to you from 231 6th Avenue in Beatrice, Alabama, as we present to you uh, www.gospelmusictoday.com. Enjoy. This is Gospel Music Today. Now, here are the hosts of Gospel Music Today, Ken and Jean Grady. Welcome to Gospel Music Today. We are very glad you could be with us. We have Southern Gospel News coming up, some concert updates, and Jean has a feature group. Our feature group this week is called Uplifted. I'll be talking to Southern Gospel Hall of Fame member Kenny Gates on today's program. And you've been listening to some new music. A couple of new CDs, one by the Pathfinders and one by Redeemed Trio. And you've been reading? Out on the Internet. I've been to absolutelygospel.com. We were on the road in Marietta, Georgia. We heard a concert by the King's Heralds. We will have exclusive video on today's program. And the archives? From 2014 in Tulsa, Oklahoma, we heard Primitive Quartet sing exclusive video on today's program. A lot going on. Let's get started. You are watching Gospel Music Today. The news is next. Jason Crabb has received his second Grammy Award for his fourth studio release, Unexpected. The Day Win Project was produced by Jay Demarcus of Rascal Flats. Fowler Media Partners has launched a new Southern Gospel Internet music station. The station, known as the Little White Church, features modern Southern Gospel and familiar favorites. Manager Tim Bullens of the Anchorman Quartet of Asheboro, North Carolina, has announced that lead vocalist Ronnie Bright will be leaving the group to pursue other areas of ministry. Promised Land Quartet has added a new member. George Thomas from Bunker Hill, West Virginia, will be the new bass singer for the group. That's a look at some of the happenings in the world of Southern Gospel. You can keep up with the latest Southern Gospel news by reading SGN Scoops Digital Magazine. Take a look at their website at sgnscoops.com. And you can find more Southern Gospel news at our website, gospelmusictoday.com. We have been on the road. Yes, we have. We've been to Marietta, Georgia, and we were able to see some old friends friends that used to be right next to us in our booth at NQC, that's the King's Heralds. And I think we have a clip. Yes, we do. How many happy folks do we have here tonight? If you're happy, let me see your hands. Well, here's a song for each and every one of you. Once I was made sad by the heartbreak of sin. Tears like a flood came storming within. When Jesus brought his sweet sunshine of amazing grace, a lifetime of tears his happiness replaced. My heart is happy, oh so happy. I'm satisfied, I've been redeemed. I've been redeemed. I'll give the world a smile, something within oh. me. Oh, so happy. Ah. 
was from a concert presented by our friend Robert York in Marietta, Georgia. It was great to see the King's Heralds for all the years. The National Quartet Convention was in Louisville, Kentucky. They were our booth neighbors, and uh, we, it was really great to see them. Yes, it was. Who has a birthday this week? Happy birthday to Ricky Carden. Ricky sings with the Down East Boys, and his birthday is on March 7th. And we wish a happy birthday to all our Southern Gospel friends. We have more exclusive video by the King's Heralds coming up a little later. But first, Jean has been listening to some new music. Redeem Trio has a new CD out called The River's Been Rough. It was produced by Dustin Jenkins and Phil Cross. Some of the writers on the CD are Rebecca Peck and Chris Allman. Some songs that are on the CD are Castles in the Sand and I Go to the Rock. My favorite is called Hold Me. That's Redeem Trio with The River's Been Rough. This is a concert update from Gospel Music Today. Steadfast Quartet sings at Liberty Baptist Church in Jackson, Georgia on March 16 at 6 p.m. If you're looking for a concert near you, check the search engine at gospelgigs.com. And you can always use the links at our website, gospelmusictoday.com. Uplifted is a dynamic Southern Gospel group from Alabama that blends the old and new songs to present an inspiring and exciting program to audiences of all ages. Brought together through many prayers, members of Uplifted have dedicated themselves to spreading the gospel through song. The Uplifted ministry was born more than two decades ago with the group taking its name from John 12, 32. Their aim is to uplift the name of Jesus Christ and their ministry is to reach lost souls by presenting their music as a witness for our Lord and Savior. Uplifted records with Daywin Records and their latest project is Victory is Coming. You can find out more about this week's feature group at upliftedministries.com. Robert York brought the King's Heralds to Marietta, Georgia, and we have more exclusive video coming up next on Gospel Music Today.
Coming up next on Gospel Music Today, Ken visits with Kenny Gates. Welcome back to Gospel Music Today. We had the opportunity to visit with Kenny Gates and his wife Cindy in their home not long ago. Kenny sang for many years, sang and played the piano with the Blue Ridge Quartet. That's up next on Gospel Music Today. We are on the road today. We're not too far from home. We're in Inman, South Carolina, and we are talking to a gospel music legend, Kenny Gates. And uh, Kenny, we want to welcome you to Gospel Music today. Well, well thank you, Ken. <laughs> I, I, we have something in common. We have almost the same. We've got the same initials. That's right. It, but I would yeah. like to thank you and your wonderful wife for dropping in today and sharing some of my memories. What was was the was the Blue Ridge Quartet your first quartet? Did you sing before that? No, it was the only professional quartet I ever sang right. and ever played for, rather. But I, uh, my beginning started back at Little Church, where we lived next door to the church, and and uh, one Sunday night uh, we had a quartet visit our church and we were there and uh, the uh, leader of the group his name was Paul Collins and I didn't know it at the time but but he was a uh, music teacher he was a representative of the James D. Vaughn Music Company in Lawrenceburg Tennessee and uh, he was a he taught private piano lessons voice lessons and held singing schools so that's that's where I actually started. My mother talked to him that night about me taking piano lessons because she had been trying to teach me some notes and uh, my lines and spaces and things, and uh, she thought it was time to turn me over to a teacher. So, <laughs> so that's that's where I got started by taking lessons there. And later on, I went to his singing schools, and this was even before my voice changed. I, I, in the singing school, I sang with the ladies. I was the alto singer. All right. <laughs> and uh, I guess my first experience with a quartet was one weekend. His quartet was booked in uh, up in uh, around Boone, North Carolina, up in the mountains. And uh, his tenor singer got sick and couldn't go, so he he called. He came to my house. We didn't have a phone. Came by and, and asked if I could go with them on that trip over the weekend and sing tenor in their group. <laughs> so how, how old were you then? I was about uh, ten years old. Whoa! <laughs> All right. But I could sing the alto part, and that's the same thing as the tenor singers would sing. Yeah, so yeah. that was my first experience in a quartet. Wow. When 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 was your first full-time. What year was that with the Blue Ridge Quartet? Well, in uh, 1949, um, the the Blue Ridge Quartet was had relocated to Spartanburg, South Carolina, and David Reese had been playing piano for him for some time before that, and uh, he had got married, and he was going to get out of the quartet business, and he got a job as a radio announcer in a radio station in Newton, North Carolina. And uh, the tenor singer of the group was from the same part of the country I was up in Lincoln, North Carolina, Lincoln County. And he remembered me from the part-time quartet I was with up there. And uh, he recommended me, and I came down here, and I, they took me on a two-week trial. Mm -hmm. And I've been here ever since. <laughs> Still trying out, I yeah. guess. <laughs> it was a long two-week trial, wasn't it? Yeah, turned into 28 years. Mm. <laughs> the blue in the uh, in the early.